Are you still reeling from the end of WandaVision and need a break? Too bad! The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is already upon us, and today we're breaking down everything you absolutely need to know before the start of the series. Damn right. Who's returning? Who will take up the Captain America mantle? Will Mephisto make an appearance? Wait, uh, strike that last one. We all know how wishing for that turned out for WandaVision. Anyways, how excited are you for Captain America's sidekick Battle Royale, aka the Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Where do we start? Let's discuss discuss right now. March 19th, 2021, prepare yourselves for the next big thing in the MCU. Phase 4 has gotten off to a tremendous start thanks to WandaVision, and the MCU has strategically set up its release schedule where it will bombard us with new content almost every week until the end of time. So we're about to move away from Westview and all of its sitcom glory and instead focus on another pairing. But the two stars at the front of Falcon and Winter Soldier obviously share a lot less love than Wanda and Vision. I hate you. In fact, the trailers make it seem like these two just can't work together at all. It's of course Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes, the MCU's newest odd couple. And they'll be fronting this new show after years of being a Captain America sidekick. Come on! So what is the most important thing you need to know about The Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Well, for one, you should probably know just who is in this massive cast, as some of them might surprise you. Like, it's not a spoiler to say that both Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes will be back, I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. But who else? Well, I think I'm most excited for the show's villain, Helmut Zemo, who was last seen at the end of Captain America's Civil War. Living, I'm not done with you yet. If you don't remember, this was basically one of the few villains who actually sort of won in the end. His whole thing was to destroy the Avengers from within. He knew he could never eliminate Thor or Captain America or Iron Man or anyone like that in full-on combat, so he instead enacted maybe the most complicated plan out of any Marvel villain in order to get the Avengers to turn on each other. And guess what? It totally worked. Thanks to using Bucky strategically, Zemo was able to set up a massive brawl and a subsequent fallout for the Avengers. They probably would have stayed a separate too if the mad titan Thanos didn't come knocking on Earth's door and force them all to reunite once again. So overall, Zemo is a big deal. What's he gonna do now that he's loose? Well, more on that in a bit, because there are other returning characters you need to know about. Also set to return is Sharon Carter, Peggy's niece who's done a good amount of butt kicking in the past, but hasn't had a chance to really shine yet. This show could give her that chance. Given the spy-like nature of the show, it makes sense that Sharon is involved. And who knows, maybe her appearance will actually help settle one of the biggest debates about the MCU right now, which is answering the question about Cap's time travel at the end of Endgame. Was Cap always Piggy's husband and Sharon's uncle growing up, which makes their kiss an awkward conversation topic around Thanksgiving? Or did Cap travel back, create a different timeline, and then hopped timelines when he was old man Cap to give the shield away? Hopefully, Sharon's inclusion in the show can not only flesh out her character, but also answer that burning question. Oh, and how could I forget about War Machine? Yes, Don Cheadle's roadie will pop up in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Man, I hate saying that full title. It's a long title for a TV show. It's unclear what Rhodey's role is going to be or how big a part he's going to play, but I imagine his appearance will help set up his future Armor Wars storyline or even Secret Invasion. And now, the return you've all been waiting for. Nope, sorry, it's not Old Man Cap, though I wouldn't count out a minor appearance by him just yet. No, I don't think I will. I'm talking about George Batrock, aka Batrock the Leaper. He's a minor comic character who appeared in the opening of Captain America the Winter Soldier and engaged in a one-on-one -on -one fight with Captain America. And I'll just say it, Batrock might be stronger than Thanos. My evidence is that there's a moment in that fight where Batrock kicks Captain America's shield and makes him off balance. That's crazy. Cap held his ground against things like Thor's hammer and Thanos' punches. But one flying kick from Batrock is enough to disorient Cap for a second? I call shenanigans. Anyways, Batrock is back and he's probably not alone. He looks like he's on a team that's rumored to be the Thunderbolts. But only time will tell if that's true. That's quite a stacked cast, isn't it? And I'm sure there'll be more as the show goes on. So what exactly are all these characters going to be doing over the course of the series? Well, it looks like there's going to be two major plot lines to follow. 
The first is the battle for the Captain America mantle. I'm sure we all remember at the end of Endgame, the old, bingo-loving, tapioca-eating Captain America gave his shield to Sam, telling him that he should be the next Captain America. Which raised a few eyebrows. I mean, I love Sam, but I always felt Bucky should be the next Captain America as a way to redeem his past brainwashed sins, and fully regain his patriotic nature. Plus, he's a super soldier like Cap, and Sam just has an advanced pair of wings. Anyways, that didn't matter though, Sam was set to become the new Captain America. Or is he? I mean, the show is still called The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and not Cap 2.0 and the Winter Soldier. It looks like there will be some hurdles for Falcon to claim the mantle, probably both internally and externally. The trailers make it seem like Sam is struggling to live up to the legend that is Captain America, and not think he's ready quite yet to wear the Stars and Stripes. And on top of that, it looks like the government has something to say about it. They have their own agent ready to become a Captain America, and that's where John Walker comes in, played by Wyatt Russell in the show. In the comics, Walker has been both a hero and a villain, but if we had to speculate, given how corrupt the government has been portrayed in the MCU so far, on top of Sam's journey to become Captain America, I would guess Walker is going to turn to the dark side a bit after becoming Captain America, forcing Sam and Bucky to step up and stop him. But that's not the only thing the two are dealing with. As mentioned before, Zemo is back, this time with his comic-accurate purple mask, and he wants to finish what he started and eliminate all superheroes. And you know what? I respect him for that. He's sticking with his convictions. It's not like the show is bringing him back and suddenly giving him a different agenda or purpose of like, let's rob a bank or something. No, he had a plan in Captain America Civil War. It worked out pretty well. Now that he's free, he's like, yeah, I still got a lot of work to do. Good for him. Now, Falcon and Winter Soldier, please punch him in the face for me. But besides the actual plot of the show, we should be looking at what this is going to do for its two main characters. I think before Phase 4 started, I was a little hesitant on this show. It was focusing on two characters who worked the best as side characters up to this point. So what will it be like now that they're front and center? But WandaVision totally changed my mind here. That show, although it had its faults, showcased what happens when you have a TV show length amount of time to flesh out characters, so this bodes well for Sam and Bucky. Plus, their relationship is going to make for a fascinating dynamic. The trailers have highlighted how at odds the two are most of the time, and I'm sure the show will be them learning how to work together as a team. Both of them have a very different history with Captain America, and you can see how that shapes them into the hero they are today. But they're both clearly headstrong and stubborn and want to one-up the other at every possible turn. Their banter was a highlight in Civil War, so here's hoping the show fleshes out their dynamic and makes them one of the best pairings in the MCU. Can you move your seat up? No. So, as mentioned before, the show is airing on March 19th, 2021. And again, that's great. It seems to be setting up a schedule where we'll be getting new MCU content on an almost weekly basis. How lucky are we, right? But then, of course, we're going to get used to that and start clamoring for new MCU content twice a week. And then after that, come on, Disney Plus, give me new MCU content every single day. Anyways, regarding the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it's actually going to be shorter than WandaVision with only six episodes. Now, you can take that as a good good or bad thing. Yes, that's less content, but it also means that there's absolutely no room for filler. And I think this is going to feel less like a TV show than WandaVision. From the start, Kevin Feige and the producers have stated this show is really one long movie split up into six parts. It's also been said each episode will be between 40 to 50 minutes, and let's hope it sticks to that. Remember in WandaVision, there was a rumor that the last three episodes would be an hour long each, but all of them were like 40 minutes with that long outro credit sequence? Yeah, here's hoping the episodes for The Falcon and the Winter Soldier aren't like 30 minutes each, right? And because this is really one big movie split into six parts, it makes sense that it has the same director for every episode. Carrie Skogland will direct every episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and if you don't know her name, well, you probably should. She's been a TV directing vet for over 20 years. Years, directing episodes of Boardwalk Empire, The Killing, The Borgeses, Under the Dome, Longmire, Vikings, Power, Penny Dreadful, The Walking Dead, House of Cards, The Punisher, The Handmaid's Tale, Ugh, the list goes on and on. She definitely knows a thing or two about directing TV episodes, so it's super exciting to see her style be brought to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. 
On the writing side of things, the show has some exciting, diverse talent on board. The head writer and showrunner is Malcolm Spellman, who has a history producing things like Hip Hop Uncovered and Empire. And you can expect a good amount of solid action in the show as well, since Derek Kolstad is on the writing staff, who writes for the John Wick franchise. Music-wise, the show decided to keep it in the Captain America family, with Henry Jackman on board to compose the show. He has previous history composing the score for Captain America The Winter Soldier and Captain America Civil War. Yeah, sounds like a smart choice to compose this show. And overall, the big thing to consider with this show is longevity. WandaVision feels like an open and shut event series, while future shows like Loki have discussed more seasons in the future. Glorious. So where does that leave Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Well, it depends on who you believe. Months ago, there were teases from Marvel that later seasons of the show would possibly have a name change, hinting not only that Falcon would probably eventually become a Captain America and not go by Falcon anymore, but that seemingly confirmed that there would be more seasons. But now, star Anthony Mackie has recently cast doubt on more adventures with these two Avengers. He said no talks have been had about a season 2, and I guess that sort of makes sense. If Sam becomes Captain America by the end, and Bucky wraps up his character arc, then there's no real reason to continue, especially since there's about a bajillion other Disney Plus MCU shows on the horizon. But only time will tell.